Welcome to my kitchen. It's Leanne P with Epicure, and I'm so glad that you've joined me tonight. We're going to be doing a super fun cooking class here this evening, shining some spotlights on some of our brand new and uh, favorite summer items. So we are going to help you take your burger game up a notch this season. Uh, before we jump in, I'd love to welcome you all. I'm so glad that you've joined us. And for those of you who might be new to Epicure, here's just a little tiny bit of information about who we are. We are a 100% Canadian, family-owned, women-led company that specializes in urban spice blends that are 100% gluten-free, nut-free, peanut-free, no added MSG, no coloring, no fillers, no preservatives, and little to no sugar or salt. These jars are packed full of just the deliciousness, not the extra optional items that you don't want to see in your foods. As a matter of fact, if you want to head to our online catalog or if you have one of our gorgeous new summer catalogs in hand, right inside that front cover, you're going to see our never ever list because we are just as enthusiastic about all the items you'll never find in our foods than what you do find. So absolutely thrilled to be sharing all about those with you tonight and spotlighting as well some of our amazing time-saving cookware. Because we know that for most of us, when we're cooking at home, we want it to be quick, we want it to be easy, we want it to be delicious and good for us at the same time. So we're going to take all those boxes for you tonight. So as you watch what I do here, keep in mind, oh my gosh, we could do a, cu a custom kitchen class for you and your friends on all sorts of different themes. So be sure to connect with your consultant, ask them some questions about what we have available for everyone, because this is so fun. Normally we do our cooking classes live in your kitchen. We come to you, you and your friends get to taste and sample what we're cooking. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I don't even cook. You and your friends get to roll up your sleeves, wash your hands and do the cooking. But because of our current situation, we've had to pivot and transition our businesses into an online version. And as you're gonna find out tonight, it works wonderfully. It's so much fun and we can still share with you and help you um, simplify life in your kitchen. So we're gonna dive in tonight by starting with a beverage because any good summer get together always has a cocktail or two. So I don't know about you, but I love tea-based cocktails. So tonight we're shining the spotlight on one of our favorite summer teas, pardon me, <clears throat> the Hibiscus Bliss. This is a really lovely blend that's lightly tart and tangy not as tangy as cranberries, but somewhat like a lemonade. So absolutely love to brew the tea double strength or make a simple syrup. We have recipes right on our website, epicure.com, that tells you how to make a simple syrup with your tea. And I just chill it in a cruet. So this is that amazing little jar that we also use to serve and store our salad dressings. So you can have one for your salad dressing, you can have one for your tea syrups, so here in my tall glass, I've got some diced berries, I've got some ice, I'm going to add some of this concentrated hibiscus bliss syrup, and it's as much or as little as you like, and then I'm going to add a little bit of lemon lime soda. Now in your house, if you wanted a, a sangria, I love to add a sparkling wine at this point, like a cava, prosecco, spumante. You can splurge and go for champagne if you like, because I love the bubbles. Um, if you want a little more high octane, you can add some plain vodka or citrus vodka. And if you're not so much a sweet palate, you can use this with soda water as well. So we're just gonna top up our glass there and we have a gorgeous, refreshing summer drink. I've done it in the glass, but it is absolutely fantastic in an entire pitcher as well, and then serve it with your big, beautiful jug, loaded up maybe with sliced berries and sliced lemon and lime. So really, really delicious. So let's take a sip. Ah, oh, and it is delicious. I'm gonna enjoy that as we cook together here tonight. So we are cooking from the Summer Strong Collection, again in our gorgeous new catalog. The Summer Strong Collection is on page 13, and I can't recommend this set highly enough. 
It's an amazing sampler of full-size jars of many of our brand new summer products and returning favorites, and it comes with the best little cookbook. If you love to have some guidance in the kitchen and like to follow a recipe, it comes with the amazing Summer Strong cookbooklet. So fantastic recipes, 16 delicious recipes in here, and it even has a grocery shopping list, a meal planning guide, and a menu plan. So if you just want to simplify a week or two of life in your kitchen this summer, this is your new best friend. So we are heading to the burger page tonight, and we're going to make the Tuscan chicken burger. Now the first thing I'll share with you is that it's not chicken. We are using what's available at our supermarket at the time. So right now, there's lots of ground pork available. So we've made this delicious stuffed Tuscan pork burger. So I want to share with you how we did that because I pre-grilled them and I'll show you how we're going to reheat them. So following this recipe, we just took our, our quantity of ground pork and added one of those delicious new seasonings, the Tuscan chicken burger. And this is a really delicious, super flavorful blend full of goodies like uh, garlic, tomato, onion, red bell pepper, rosemary, and a hint of sumac. Now, if you've not tried sumac, that is actually a spice that's the dried bark of a tree. And it's really tangy tasting. It's almost like citrus. So it's so bright and fresh. I adore sumac. So I was really excited to see it as an ingredient in the Tuscan chicken burger spice. So we blended that with our pork and then grabbed our three in one burger press. Does anybody out there already have this burger press? It is the best burger press I've ever used. And it uses uh, three different methods to make three different kinds of burgers. So let's take a look at those. It does come with a little direction sheet to walk you right through all the different steps, but let's look in real life. So this is your burger press. So number one, you can make a classic burger, a nice big thick quarter pound burger, simply by putting your ground meat in the bottom section and flattening it out with the top section, this large flat circle. And then once you've pressed your meats into there, the bottom, pushes up. So you can take your patty out this way or you can turn it completely upside down. Your patty will drop out and you just peel the plate off the top. So it couldn't be simpler to make your basic burger. So let's look at a mini burger because we can also do sliders with this press. So the little portion for the sliders fits here right in the top and it's the exact same structure as the big burger. It has a little removable plate that sits right inside. So you simply put in your ground meat. I flatten it down again with that flat surface. And then you can either push up the bottom or turn it over and it falls right out. And then you remove the plate from the top of your burger patty. So really adorable. These make amazing little burgers for kids. And heads up anyone who has small kids at home and they get intimidated by large quantities of food on their plate making little burgers that fit their little hands is an amazing way to help them enjoy their summer meals. I also love to do sliders as a hearty appetizer. So if at some point in the summertime we're able to socialize a little with family or friends, these are amazing little sort of snack sized burgers that you can serve on dinner rolls. So you can do all different flavors of fun little sliders. So love the sliders. And now to me, this next type of burger, which is what we made tonight, is the showstopper. It is a stuffed burger, and you can make it so quickly, so easily. So you take half the amount of meat that you're going to use for your entire burger. So that's about a scant quarter cup. Add it to your burger press, and then instead of using this flat plate, this large flat plate, when you look at the handle, you'll see it has little arrows and one says open, one says close. So if you take the handle and twist it in the direction to open, it pops right out. So it's actually two separate pieces. And instead of one big flat surface, you'll see this one is indented. So you've loaded up your, your base of your burger press with 
partial amount of the ground meat. So you're going to press it now with that indented part. And what you're going to have is ground meat across the bottom and up the sides with a pocket in the center. And you can fill that pocket with all kinds of goodies. Tonight, we followed the recipe in the guide and filled it with goat cheese. But you might use goat cheese or feta or shredded cheddar. You could put sauteed mushrooms, sauteed onions, all sorts of lovely things in there. Like I've done Greek burgers where I season the ground meat with Greek salad dressing and then put feta, spinach, and sun-dried tomatoes in the middle. So you're only limited by your imagination. You can do some amazing combinations here. So as I shared, tonight we've done the Tuscan burgers just as per the recipe and stuffed them with goat cheese. So I took those out to the grill earlier and we're going to reheat them in our amazing multi-purpose steamer. This is my all-time favorite piece of cookware from Epicure. It's actually one of our host's most popular 50% off items. So folks love to get a sweet deal on the multi-purpose steamer because it is such a must-have in all of our kitchens. It comes with a tray, so you can do double-decker cooking. You could load it up with salmon fillets in the bottom, put your full head of broccoli on top, or you could lay your bacon slices on the tray and let the fat drip through the bottom. Tonight, I've loaded it up with our two big, fat Tuscan burgers, and we're going to reheat those in the microwave. You can actually cook your burgers completely in your steamer in about five minutes. So if you're prepping for a barbecue and doing a smaller quantity, and when you look outside, all of a sudden it is not so friendly out there for grilling, maybe it started to rain, you can pop your burgers into your steamer and have them ready to go in five minutes. So we're going to reheat our burgers in just a moment, just before we plate them up. But I'd love to share with you in your steamer, you can do popcorn in your steamer with no oil or butter of any kind, just a scant half cup of kernels in there, the old fashioned kernels, pop them into the microwave for three minutes and you have beautiful light fluffy popcorn. You can use this for any vegetable. It's amazing for a chicken. You can do a frozen solid boneless skinless chicken breast in here in less than seven minutes. So it's beautiful, tender, juicy. And another one of my all-time favorites in the multi-purpose steamer is a whole chicken. A whole three to four pound bone-in chicken. Pop in your chicken, add your seasonings, however you may like, and it's done in your microwave in about 18 to 20 minutes. And your end result is so similar to a rotisserie chicken. My hands up, whoever buys rotisserie chicken at the big box store because it's super convenient. Now you can make them at home way cheaper and the big big difference is that you control the sodium if you've ever read the ingredient list on the ones from those stores unfortunately the sodium content super super high so when you do it at home you control the flavor with the seasoning you control the salt so really big plus absolutely adore our steamers so we're going to reheat our burgers in just a moment and the only thing I added to those, in addition to the Tuscan burger, is my all-time favorite. If you stand still long enough in my kitchen, I will sprinkle a little of this on you, except if you're dessert. And it's the SPG. It's salt, pepper, roasted garlic, and parsley. And I literally put it on everything. So anywhere you might have normally grabbed a salt shaker or a pepper mill and just done a little dusting, I grabbed the jar of SPG. It's my all-purpose seasoning salt, and it is a knockout. So if you're new and you don't have a lot of Epicure in your pantry yet and wondering where to start, I can't recommend highly enough. The steamer is the showstopper. You really want one of those, and grab an SPG for sure. And as, as we go through, you're thinking, oh my gosh, Leanne, I like one of everything, just one of everything in a bag. That is the very best reason to round up a couple of friends, you all sit on your own couches with a delicious beverage, of course, and host your own online cooking class. They're super quick, super easy, and you get to stock your pantry with all the Epicure goodies that you would like. So cheers. Oh, so good. So now to go with our Tuscan burgers, we want a yummy side dish. So we are going to whip together a delicious creamy potato salad. 
So this is another new spice blend. It's in that Summer Strong collection and also available separately in our catalog. And I have to tell you, this is our second jar. We are going through this one so quickly. It is absolutely phenomenal. Um, we are going to make it as per the recipe in the Summer Strong booklet. It's a little different than the one on the jar. So I'm really, really looking forward to trying it. So in our uh, mixing bowl here, this is our amazing four cup prep bowl. We have always had our wonderful small prep bowls. I'm sure you've seen these. They're tempered glass. They're marked off on the side with measurements, both imperial and metric. So there's a quarter cup, a half a cup, three quarters of a cup, and then the full bowl is one cup. And they all come with amazing little silicone lids. So you don't need tin foil or saran wrap. Great for storing ingredients or little bits of leftovers. Imagine taco night when you have all your condiments laid out. So really convenient. These come in a set of four. And then we also have the bigger version of these. This is a four cup prep bowl. And again, that gorgeous silicone lid. So inside here, as per our recipe, um, I have a generous quarter cup each of mayo and Greek yogurt because I'm going to use a little of this as the uh, garnish on our burger as well. So I'm making a slightly larger portion. And then to this, we're going to add two tablespoons of that delicious potato salad seasoning. And we are going to use another all-time favorite Epica product. This is called the four-in-one measuring spoon. And it has four measurements all in one tool. So instead of hunting through your cookware drawer, looking for all the pieces, everything's right here. It's a tablespoon, a teaspoon, and when you turn it over, a half teaspoon, and then there's a little mark right here for a quarter teaspoon. So it is so, so handy. If you are watching tonight and you have gift giving occasions coming up, maybe it's a wedding shower or a graduation gift, a housewarming gift, birthday, Father's Day, and you're going to be thinking, oh my gosh, maybe I should get them a collection of spices or one of the meal kits or a steamer and a couple of spices. This is a great little item to add. It's very inexpensive and it's worth its weight in gold in your kitchen. So we're gonna add two tablespoons of the potato salad mix and the tablespoon fits right in the jar. So you don't have to try to shake it out and have it spill all over your counter. So it goes right into your jar very neatly and tidily and all our spice ends up where we want it to go. And then following the recipe again, we are going to add two tablespoons of another item that's really gaining popularity. It's called Better Than Bacon. So it's an amazing product that tastes just like bacon, but it's made from pinto beans. It is vegan. So it's a little smoky, a little salty, gives you a big hit of flavor comes in these large flakes, so you can use the flakes just like that, or you can put a grinder on top, one of our ceramic grinders, and then use it like a seasoning at your table and grind it over everything. So the recipe calls for two tablespoons, so we'll add those, and I'm gonna sprinkle some on top, so I'm gonna go a little scant with that two tablespoons, but oh my goodness, it is delicious. So if you love bacon, and you really would love to put it on everything, this Better Than Bacon has your name written right on it. It's fantastic. So if they big dishes, potato dishes, you're gonna love it. And then the other item in our dressing is another summer product. It's a returning favorite, and it's a sweet and spicy mustard. So it's amazing on hamburgers, hot dogs, uh, served with any sandwich as a sandwich spread, mixed into salad dressings, used for dipping pretzels. It is wonderful. So it's made from organic mustard seed from the prairies and organic honey from Quebec. So it's truly a Canadian product. And our recipe calls for one tablespoon. So we're gonna add one tablespoon of our sweet and spicy mustard right in there. So, oh my goodness, that one really smells delicious. That on a ham and cheese sandwich changes the game altogether. Absolutely fabulous. So we're gonna use our whisk and just blend together our dressing. And I'll share with you about this whisk. Normally folks don't get super, super excited about a whisk, it's just a whisk. Many of us have at least one in our drawer at home. But what I wanna share with you is one of the things I've learned on my journey through life 
is that jobs are so much easier when you have the right tool for the job. And many times when we're starting out at outfitting our kitchen, we might have a whisk that has a really narrow handle and just a few wires. And it takes a long time to blend something together. Our hand gets tired, our arm gets tired. There is a big difference between that utensil and a professional quality whisk. So this is a professional quality whisk. It has a nice chunky handle, so it's very comfortable to hold and multiple piano wire tines. So you can whisk things together. It just took a second to blend that salad dressing, right? And it's also closed. So right up here in the handle, there's a stainless steel plate that runs right across it. So there's no way for food debris to go up inside the handle to spoil. And then it can't come out at a later date when you're whisking and having little particles fall out. So absolutely love a professional whisk. Really fantastic. So there's our dressing ready to go. So we are going to add that to our cooked potatoes. So right here in that amazing steamer again, this is another reason I adore my steamer. When we do barbecues, one of my favorite side dishes is potato salad. And though I'm not a fan of having a big pot full of uh, boiling water in my kitchen in the hot weather, I don't like how it makes everything extra hot, extra humid, so I rarely got to enjoy potato salad with my grilled items. So now with the steamer, I can actually do my potatoes in the microwave in about six to eight minutes. So inside here, I have 20 baby potatoes that I've quartered. They cook to perfection in eight minutes in my steamer, no water whatsoever. And we are going to dress them with the salad dressing and then add two diced cooked hard boiled eggs as per our recipe. And then our salad is done. So quick, so easy. So here's our dressing. I'm gonna hold back a little as I shared so that we can uh, use it on the burgers. And with this salad, what I love about it as well, is you can serve this as soon as it's mixed together. I like to mix it hot because then it lets the potatoes absorb all the flavors as they cool. So you can eat it as soon as it's mixed together. You can eat it at room temperature, you can chill it, you can make it the day before, whatever you like. If you're lucky enough to have leftovers, you can enjoy it after it's been chilled overnight. So we're just stirring together that dressing. We're gonna add the eggs. So super quick and easy. We're gonna wipe out our bowl with this fun little tool. It's called a three-in-one spatula. And this is quite new to Epicure. It's got a really sturdy stainless steel core. So the actual tool itself is made of steel. And then it's coated in our food grade silicone that's heat resistant up to 425 degrees. So it has a little flexible blade on the end and a scoop. So if you wanted to get down to the end of a bottle of mayonnaise or a container of yogurt, uh, jam, peanut butter, it's amazing for that. So here we just have some little egg pieces stuck to the glass of our prep bowl and it's just gonna zoom through there and get out every last bit. Because we want it in our salad, not stuck to the bowl. So give that a stir, and it is done. I mean, how quick and easy is that? And I don't know about you, but if you've been picking up potato salad at the local big box store, it's pretty expensive for what's in that container. Because potatoes are a really inexpensive grocery item. So here, you've got a delicious potato salad for pennies. So we're gonna dish that up with our burgers. Just move these aside. So now one of the things that I've also done is I have augmented my burger bun. So I'm a big fan of texture and extra flavor. So right here on our bun, I've actually buttered it very, very lightly with a homemade garlic butter and popped it on the grill just until I had these gorgeous toasty grill marks. So what this means is big, big flavor. This is not your ordinary bun. So in my prep bowl, I simply had a half cup of softened real butter, and I used the same Tuscan chicken burger rub. So the same spice blend, because it's got the garlic, it's got those amazing little pieces of tomato and rosemary and parsley, really, really yummy. And because I'm a huge garlic fan, I did add another little sprinkle of our roasted garlic aioli. So if you're a garlic fan, this is another workhorse for your kitchen. The only thing in this jar is 100% pure roasted garlic. 
you can mix and match with this in anything you're cooking. So I added a little bit of that to make our delicious garlic butter. Then use that three in one spatula again to just simply spread a very light coating on our buns and pop them on the grill. So now we have these beautiful, beautiful golden toasted burger buns. So I'm gonna pop the burgers in the steamer just to reheat them for us and then I'm gonna plate them up. So what I love about putting sort of a spin on a classic burger is almost every family loves burgers. Once the summertime hits, we're going out to the grill. That's a staple in many of our homes. And it doesn't have to be the same old burger all the time. You don't have to feel like, oh gosh, I ate this exact meal last week. So this is just a fun way to mix up the protein, to do something a little different. And if you're uh, one of my vegetarian friends watching this, we have amazing suggestions for you as well. I mean, you could mix this Tuscan burger seasoning with a smidge of balsamic vinegar and olive oil and marinate some big, beautiful portobello mushrooms in there and pop those on the grill. And then carry on with the same idea. You could even do your buns grilled like this as well, but make them with a, a vegetarian-friendly margarine and enjoy a delicious meal with fabulous flavors, but vegetarian friendly. And then we also have, for example, in our burger kit, we have our ever popular veggie burgers. So these actually hold together well enough to go on the grill, and you just use our package with shredded zucchini and a little bit of cooked quinoa, and I'll share another great kitchen hack with you. What I love to do is make my quinoa in advance. Each recipe here calls for one cup of cooked quinoa. You can pre-portion your quinoa into Ziploc freezer bags and pop it in your freezer. And then when you want to whip up a batch of veggie burgers, your quinoa is ready to go. Two or three minutes on the counter, it's defrosted, into the mix it goes. And what I love about Epicure is when we come up with vegetarian alternatives, like our bagel mix, our pizza crust, our veggie burger. We don't just want things that taste good, but maybe aren't the very best nutritionally for you. Like for example, in our veggie burger, this has a base of chickpea flour, which is a powerhouse source of protein for you. So we want you to be enjoying delicious food that's so good for you too. So we've got lots of options. So be sure to connect with your consultant if you have dietary concerns or allergies, um, we have lots of resources to help us advise you into the products that you might really enjoy. So let's take a look. I hear my timer going here. Oh, it feels piping hot. So let's make a little bit of space here. We've got so many delicious things to choose from here tonight. So our burgers are done. I wish you were here. Again, this is the portion of the evening when I always wish that we had smell-o-vision because these smell amazing. So we are going to dress our bun with a little bit of that uh, potato salad dressing that has the sweet and spicy mustard in there. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? And then we're going to add one of these beautiful, big, fat, stuffed burgers. So these have been stuffed with goat cheese. There we go. Now you could add some uh, lettuce leaves, you could add sliced tomato, you could add pickles. Oh my gosh, I have quickled red onions in my fridge that I totally forgot about. And you know what? They're too good to miss. I'm going to be right back. So the quickles is a spice we carry in the summertime that lets you make really super fast homemade pickles. So they go together in no time. They taste amazing, and we put them on all the things, like literally everything. So almost every week, week and a half, we are making up a batch of these pickled red onions. They are so flavorful. They add a really light, bright, tangy touch to everything you make at home. And I like to cut them super thin with the mandolin. So a little tangle of those on top, and that delicious burger is going to be ready to eat. And we've, got, uh, we've finished our plate here with a cup of veggies to perfectly balance your plate. So you have your protein, you have your starch, you have your veggies. So there's our amazing Tuscan burger served on a bun. And then we are also going to show you a gluten-free version over here. Because maybe you don't want a bun and a potato salad. 
So here we're going to play up and use lettuce for the bun. So there we go. We've got our lettuce. We're going to put our burger right on top. There we go. We're going to dress that as well with a little bit of that. Oops. I've got a sliding burger. Look at that. And then, oh, there we go. My impeccably clean fingers. We'll put that one back. Oh, and it's good and hot, that's for sure. We're going to put on our pickled onions. Because you always need a few crickled onions. So what I love about our quickling spice is we adore it with red onion. But you can do cucumbers, zucchini, carrots, asparagus, uh, green beans, wax beans. You can make them spicy by adding some salsa seasoning to the, to the mix. You might make them dilly by adding some lemon dilly. So imagine your Caesars. Maybe your cocktail of choice is a Caesar out on the deck. So you might make your own spicy beans or spicy asparagus or dilly asparagus this summer. So there's our burger. You top it with your other lettuce leaf right there. And we're going to add some of our delicious potato salad to that. Goodness, everything is smelling amazing here this evening. So, we just made two completely different meals in that time frame. Each one serves about four adults, so we've got some delicious options. And I think just because we need another tiny bit of better than bacon over the top of that salad, if you had some fresh chives in your garden, you could add a little sprinkle. So here we have our burger on lettuce with our potato salad, and here we have our delicious burger on our garlic butter bun with our veggies. 